Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Caesarea. This place here is really visited a lot. You can see a lot of people here. It's a lovely summer day. We got the uh, sailboats back in the background, so you see the modern with the old. Uh, this is about a 2,000 year old site here, and this is Caesarea. This is the place that Herod the Great, just before Christ, built this. And he built this out of nothing. He built this deep sea port, so he switched the port from down by Joppa up to here. So this was the main place large city so a lot of things happened here it's such a beautiful time to be here so I, I hope you enjoy this video we're going to see a lot of amazing things that god has done here uh, caesarea was built by herod the great about 25 to 13 bc as the port city called caesarea maritime it was named after the roman emperor augustus caesar king herod the great was the one who had all the children two years and younger slaughtered in bethlehem in his attempt to kill christ so that's probably how you remember herod the great he was the unfortunate baby killer that killed many of the children in bethlehem he was a jealous king who feared losing his power and control in fact he killed uh, one of his uh, wives and he killed some of his family members because he feared uh, losing control so he built Caesarea here out of nothing, and he was a great builder. Some of his major building projects included this seaport here of Caesarea, the new temple in Jerusalem. He enlarged the Temple Mount and made it 35 acres in size. It was massive. Uh, he built Masada, and he built the Herodian in Bethlehem, among other great feats that he did. But he was a major master builder, and he was good at it. He was known for his building ventures, and no one equaled him in this respect. Caesarea was the capital of Israel during the time of Christ and during the whole Roman occupation of Israel. After the apostle Paul received Christ, he was sent to Tarsus from this very port. It says in Acts 9, And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down, being Paul, down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus, so from right here. Uh, Cornelius, the first Gentile, received the Holy Spirit here. So Cornelius was the first Gentile to receive the Holy Spirit. And of course, uh, Simon Peter came up from Joppa, came up to right here in, in uh, Caesarea to uh, Cornelius. In fact, it's really special. Let's just read a little bit about this. It says in Acts 10, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of what was known as the Italian cohort, a devout man who feared God with all his household. He gave alms generously to the poor and prayed continually to God. About the ninth hour of the day, that's about three in the afternoon, the first hour would be six, 12 is the sixth hour, and then the ninth hour is three in the afternoon. So about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God come into him and say, Cornelius, and he stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God, and now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had departed, he called two of his servants, a devout soldier, from among those who attended him, and having related everything to them, sent them to Joppa. So Cornelius was a God-fearing person. Uh, he was not a Jew, he was a Gentile, but he respected the Jewish faith. He saw the Jewish faith and he feared God and he loved God. He prayed often and he gave alms or he gave uh, gifts to the poor to help them out. And he was a soldier, a centurion, so that meant he was over a uh, hundred soldiers. So he was a devout man, he was an important person, and uh, he loved the Lord. So he prayed and God said, send some people down to Joppa, your servants, to get Simon Peter. So Simon Peter then comes up here and Joppa's about 35 miles away. So they come up here right along the ocean, right along the Via Maris, along the plain of Sharon. And uh, so this is where the Holy Spirit was given to the Gentiles, monumental. If you're watching this video right now, uh, you're probably a Gentile. If you're a believer, uh, if you're not a Jew, then you are a Gentile. So it was here is where the seed of your faith begins. Uh, so it was here that God gave the Holy Spirit and opened up 
uh, salvation to all. Now, of course, salvation could always be found because any foreigner could join the Jewish faith. So God never excluded anyone, but he did something really special here. This is where the new covenant was instituted for the Gentiles. The new covenant was inst instituted on Pentecost for the Jews. But here, the new covenant was inst instituted for the Gentiles. And of course, in the Great Commission, it says to go into all the world and make uh, disciples uh, of all nations, all people groups. So right here is where that all began uh, to the Gentiles, so to speak. So it says in, in Acts 10, while Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. So Peter came up here and began to preach. And as he was preaching, it says the Holy Spirit uh, came out and just fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on even the Gentiles, for they were hearing them speak in tongues and extolling God. So in the same way that uh, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came with fire of tongues, uh, to show that the in new uh, covenant was being instituted uh, and that, uh, that the Holy Spirit was being given. So in the same identical manner, it was given here at Caesarea as well. And then um, it says, for they uh, heard uh, them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, can anyone withhold water for baptizing this people? who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. So Peter uh, baptized. You can see the ocean out there. It's very likely, It's uh, the ocean is very warm. It's the Mediterranean. It's very likely that the new believers were baptized there because Caesarea was more of a Gentile community. It wasn't really a lot of Jews here. The Jews were more up in Jerusalem and, and Sea of Galilee. They didn't, weren't really that much here. Uh, so we don't really know if there was a lot of mitzvahs or so, stuff like that, bathing pools, cleansing pools. So if there were, they might have used some of those. But anyway, the ocean was a very likely uh, place as well. Um, so then Peter stayed uh, with the uh, new believers, Cornelius, and the new believers uh, right here in uh, Caesarea for uh, several days, it says, some time. Now also Philip the Evangelist lived here in Caesarea as well. Uh, so we should say Philip went down to the Ethiopian uh, eunuch who was coming up from Ethiopia. But then God um, uh, sent him to different places and he wound up here later on. And this is where uh, Philip lived. He was called Philip the Evangelist. And it says uh, in Acts 28, it says, On the next day uh, we departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. So this is talking about one of the uh, after one of the missionary uh, journeys that uh, Apo the Apostle Paul returned back on, then he came and stayed with Philip the evangelist here. And of course, uh, right out of this port is where the Apostle Paul sailed and returned here on many occasions on his missionary uh, journeys. It says in Acts 21, 7, it says, When we had finished the voyage from Tyre, we arrived at Potalamus, and we greeted the believers and the, or the brothers and stayed with them for one day. On the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea. And we entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and we stayed with him. So anyway, the Apostle Paul was returning on a voyage, one of his missionary trips. Uh, the Apostle Paul also stood trial right here in Caesarea for his faith. It says in Acts 23, When they had come to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he was from. When he heard that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive, the accusers from Jerusalem, the Pharisees and the religious leaders, and he commanded him to be guarded in Herod's praetorium. So Herod had a real nice palace here, praetorium, so this is where Paul was kept until the Pharisees came from Jerusalem to uh, stand trial. And uh, the, the Apostle Paul also spent two years here, so this trial, um, I guess didn't really go so well, maybe uh, you might think, but God was sovereign and, and, and it was God's will. And so the Apostle Paul spent two years here in prison. I'm sure he ministered and did a lot of work. Uh, it's believed that he maybe wrote some of his uh, letters uh, to the different churches right here when he was in prison for two years. And, and speaking about, uh, you know, imprisonment and all of that that Paul endured, 
you know, we might think that that prison time, and Paul at that time might have thought that that was a dead end time, that he wasn't being fruitful. But those prison years were the years where Paul wrote many of the, uh, the prison epistles, it were called. Uh, so he uh, wrote those and the other letters as well. So he spent two years here. And it says he appealed here to uh, Caesar in one of his latter trials. It says um, that Paul argued in his defense, neither against the law nor the Jews or against the temple nor against Caesar have I committed any offense. So he's laboring his defense. It's a long defense. And then he winds up saying, I appeal to Caesar. And you can see right here in this video, uh, a believed place where he stood trial, where he appeals to Caesar. Then from there, he would go to Rome to stand trial there. Uh, also, King Herod Agrippa I, now this would be King Herod the Great's son, one of his sons who was the ruler after Herod the Great. He was a ruler here, and he met his death here. And he met his death here because he was an arrogant man, and it's a very tragic uh, death. And uh, let's just look at it here. It says in Acts 12, it says, and, and on an appointed day, Herod, this would be Herod Agrippa, put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down because he did not give God the glory. He was, and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. But the word of God increased and multiplied. So can you imagine what that would have been like for Herod Agrippa to be eaten by worms? So he was just eaten alive on the spot uh, by these worms. Uh, that must have been a terrible, tragic uh, death probably even a slow death. So, some amazing things that happened here, and what can we learn from some of these major events that happened here in Caesarea? Well, Caesarea was a major port that, that Herod the Great built, built it out of nothing. Caesarea was the capital of Israel during the time of Christ and during the whole Roman occupation of Israel. Also, right here is where the Holy Spirit came, and so that shows us that God loves all people. He loves all nations, he loves all colors, all races, all nationality. God is no respecter of person. Every person is created in the image of God. They are an image bearer and God loves each person and he loves and he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. Paul came and went here on his missionary journeys right here from Caesarea. He spent two years in prison here, Paul, and from here he appealed uh, to Caesar. And then also, King Herod Agrippa uh, died here, as we just mentioned, eaten by worms. So God can deal with the proud. God can deal with those who reject him, uh, those who are self-seeking, those who have selfish ambition. God can deal with them. Now that was a tragic example. Uh, God doesn't always do that. But God can deal with those who are arrogant and proud and those who reject him. And uh, God knew for King Agrippa when his last no would be and uh, the Holy Spirit was given here, but Agrippa knew all about Christ, but apparently he had continued to reject uh, Christ and was an arrogant man, so God took his life uh, right here. So, hope you've uh, learned some things from this important place of Caesarea uh, right here, uh, this beautiful uh, port city. Uh, thank you for watching, and God bless.